point in all of our buildings, we're talking about achievement, but then also growth with all of our students. We've had conversations in the past about just the achievement. We're making AYP, or the students proficient. But now we have these conversations about growth. All students need to make sure that they are growing. We have high expectations for all of our students, but how we get them there may be different, student by student. We can go ahead and click into our SVP for Mountain View. I'm just going to show you what I mean by the achievement and growth. Here, when you're looking at our SVP score for Mountain View, you will see we have our achievement scores, which is what we have seen in the past. Then we have the growth, if you continue down. We also talk about the growth. You can see indicators of academic growth are our PBOS scores. That's an area of concern that we've had at Mountain View. When we talked about our SVP scores, that was one of the things I talked to you about, is the growth of all of our students. The other part, too, that this, this actual presentation will be hitting on is the closing the achievement gap for historically underperforming students. When we're talking about our historically underperforming students, this subgroup includes our students that have IEPs, or individual education plans, and the students that are in our Tier 3 program, you don't have to have an IEP to be in a Tier 3 program, but what I can tell you is the individuals that we'll be discussing, many of them will have an IEP, and we need to make sure that they are achieving, of course, but then also making that growth and closing the achievement gap. Um, especially for those historically underperforming students because they will be both in our regular score um, for all of our students, but then also our historically underperforming students. Go back, Lori. So again, high expectations for all of our students, but how we get there and how we get them there may vary. Okay, if we talk about our RTI chart, our response to intervention and instruction chart, you can see here we talk about this triangle. We have Tier 1 programs, which is the majority of our students. We hope for 80% of our students to be in that core instruction. Tier 2 is the next tier that a child can go into, which is targeted intervention, which for us is your tier program or your core program, but then also additional instruction for them. And then finally, the top tier, your Tier 3 students, are the students that need the true intensive interventions. And you're looking at hopefully around 5% of your students being in that Tier 3 program. Here I have for you at Mountain View, at this point, we just went through our mid-year assessment. Right now, we have 557 Mountain View students on a Tier 1, or just in our core program, which is 86%. For Tier 2, we're at 79 Mountain View students, which is 12%. And for Tier 3, we have 13 Mountain View students, which is 2%. So as you can see, when you're looking at that triangle, we're actually doing a little bit better than what we would be looking at for an RTI chart with that triangle. So we're doing a little bit better than, than what is expected when you're looking at an RTI model. For our ELA, our English Language Arts Program, for Tier 1, you probably hear us talk about Storytown. Storytown is our core program. All students, unless they're in Tier 3, are in Storytown. Storytown is the program that we use for Tier 1. Tier 2, so if they're not making growth, what we want to see, or we see that there's a skill deficit, a child may go into tier two, which is the second part of that triangle. For us, it's that story town with a skills group. Skills group can be multiple different things depending on whatever the skill deficit may be. And I have those listed, which are some of the programs that we use at all of our elementary schools as a tier two reading intervention. And then finally, we have our tier three. The two programs that we use in tier three are Read Well, which is kindergarten through third grade, and language, which is fourth grade through sixth grade. This evening, we're going to be talking about that tier three intervention, the tier three program. Mrs. Jennifer Singler is going to be speaking about Read Well, which is the K3 program, and Mr. Anthony Sarenko is going to be speaking about language, which is the fourth through sixth program. Mrs. Singler. Hi, um, I'm going to be talking to you about Read Well, and um, with Read Well, it is very heavy on phonics and decoded skills, learning the basics of how to read. So first we're going to go ahead and talk about um, decoding with phonetic awareness, phonics, and then fluency. Um, with this, we talk about letter sounds, segmenting, blending, multi-syllabic words. We um, do heavy repeated readings, um, reading with expression, and we do time readings. Um, here are some examples. In my classroom, I have my bulletin board, and we do a lot of letter sound recognition. If we talk about, if the word is sheep, um, and the kids need help with the SH, I say shivering sheep. And they hear me say shivering sheep, they know that's an SH sound. 
Um, I do this throughout the day, throughout our readings, and through our spelling. Um, daily, we do a decoding page where it takes all the sounds that we talk about in each unit, and again, multi-select words, learning how to break things up, and then putting them together. And this is a sample of a reading. The first page is with the teacher that I read with them, and we have heavy comprehension questions. And then the second page is on your own. Um, they read it as a group, they have repeated readings to me, and as, as homework. Next is our comprehension, which is vocabulary, knowledge, and we work on comprehension strategies. Here is examples of our vocabulary. With every unit, we have um, multiple pages with vocabulary. As a story town, we work through um, describing it, using it in sentences, and how it relates to us. This is an example of one of the um, comprehension packages a student did. And next is our technology. Um, we have a program ticket to read, and this is used as centers during everyday instruction. Um, it is self-paced. Students take a pretext and see where they um, are scored and where they level. Um, they complete tasks in phonics, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and it keeps it interactive. The kids can um, decorate their clubhouse, or they can stock um, their shelves of a toy shop. And here are examples. Here is the toy shop. And as they complete different phonics activities, they earn coins. And then they can go shopping with these coins and buy toys for the toy shop. And this is a clubhouse. And with this, they will be reading um, passages and having to answer comprehension questions that include a lot of vocabulary. And then they get to decorate their clubhouse. Next is Fluency Works, and this is an online program that improves fluency and vocabulary as long as um, comprehension. And this is, um, as like Storytown, they can go in and read the stories that they're working on. It'll read them to them, they can read it back, and it highlights the words as it goes so they can get better with their fluency. And then last is Vport, and this is a data management system where I'm able to go in and put their scores, and then I can see um, how they are compared to other students in that um, unit and what I need to work on next. It will run a report saying that their deficit is in this decoding skill and it will give me suggestions on what else I can do to help them. And next is Performance Plus. Um, all the kids in Greater Metro are on Performance Plus with their Storytelling benchmark, with their Dibble score, and we are just now recently adding um, our Tier 3 students. And this is showing their growth. Um, this is a particular student that he began this year, at the beginning of the year, and he has shown tremendous growth. He wasn't able to um, fully read on a third grade level. He's on, he was in the beginning of second grade, but now we are almost making our achievement to end a second grade level. So that he has grown tremendously. And this is Mr. Sorenko for language. Uh, and this is Pelos, uh, I teach the intermediate grades four through six um, tier three language program. Um, each day in our program, we go through uh, six steps in our sequence. We start with the sounds that we produce to make language, and we eventually develop it into the text that goes with language. So each day we start with phonemic awareness, and we listen to the sounds that we make. Uh, they go together to make words. The second step would be word recognition and spelling. So those sounds coming together to make the words that we use every day. Then we look at the meanings of those words and where those words come from. We talk about grammar and how we use those words uh, in our language. We then go to listening and reading comprehension, where we put those words together in sentences, and now we're understanding how we use those words. And then they're actually speaking and writing and producing language in their own way, all within one day's lesson. Uh, the general idea is we're starting with the smallest unit of language, which are, which are the sounds that we make. Uh, we go through all of those steps and we hit on the processing systems in the brain that allow students to learn language. Those being context, meaning phonological awareness, which are the sounds that we make, 
in orthography, which are the letters that we use to represent the, the sounds that we're making. So every day we're trying to hit on all four of those processing systems in the brain to really trigger their minds to remember and develop appropriate language skills. Some of the activities that we uh, use on a daily basis are a verbal call and response, which is very much a direct instruction activity, where I may tell the students, repeat after me, say the word cat, and they re respond. Say the word cat. Tell me the words that you hear, or tell me the sounds you hear in that word, and they break it down. Act. Identifying the phonemes that make that word go together. There are kinesthetic learning activities as well. A lot of research was done with this program, and it's known that the left side of our brain controls our reading ability. So when the students are learning these words and sounds, they're actually anchoring words with their right hand, which is also controlled by the left brain. So they're saying these words and sounds while making a motion. The idea is that it helps to kind of rewire their brain to remember those language components. So it's kind of a new kinesthetic approach to helping them recall what we would hope they learn in maybe kindergarten, first or second grade, but we're revisiting it with this new approach. As I said, we go through grammar, verbal and written language, and then we're reading level text. Uh, the, text uh, the program has three different texts. There's an instructional text that I work on with the students, independent text to boost their confidence, things that they can read on their own, and then there are challenge texts for those students that are really excelling at the program and need a little extra push to enrich within the language program. Um, these pictures aren't the best, but there's a few examples of our, our workbook. Um, we have uh, sentence diagramming, so we go back to some of the classic techniques in identifying how to build a sentence. Um, this is highly effective for our tier three students. Many of our tier three students are very literal, and this allows them to see exactly how to put a sentence together and where each piece of that sentence belongs. Uh, we talk about speech and how we develop sounds. Do we use our throat? Do we use our tongue, our teeth? How do we make that sound appropriately uh, in, in producing those phonemes? We sort grammar, concrete versus abstract nouns, uh, proper nouns, common nouns, pronouns, all kinds of different things. And then on the right, there's a segmenting activity where they have to take the sounds in a word and write the letters that represent each sound in the word that I give them. There is an online component of language as well. The first is Vocab Journey. It is a uh, online program that allows the students to explore words, their meaning, and it's very much animated. They click on words, they make flashcards on the computer, it reads it to them, uses it in a sentence, it shows pictures. It's really a comprehensive approach to learning the meanings of these words. We also have something called Sorted Worries for our lower functioning students. And this allows the, uh, our students to sort words based on maybe onset and rhyme, as you see here, what words end with and versus at versus at to really identify the different sounds that we make. Um, I put some results in here because I could stand here and talk about this program forever, uh, and that's great, but really the results are what are most important. How is this affecting our students? I have two sixth grade students here that I've had the pleasure of working with for a year and a half. Uh, one of them came to us from another district, and when she was tested, she had a negative lexile um, in fifth grade, reading below a kindergarten level. After a year and a half, we're approaching the second grade reading level. Um, and the second student came in with a lexile of 90, which is about 1.2, about first grade level. And after a year and a half, he's quickly approaching a fourth grade reading level. Um, this program is very research-based, and we've seen a lot of, of positive results from it. Uh, so that would be my big takeaway. And we're going to leave you with some of our students that are part of our program are going to explain to you what reading means to them.
Excuse me? Very nice. Oh, thank you. If you want any additional information about either program, we do have the, um, the pamphlets that Sopris West provides us. So we have those if you want any more information about either Rebrow or language. Thank you.
Ray um, award? I can't speak to that one. Okay, the, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, we go through this process every year. Um, under the E-rate uh, guidelines, uh, you have to post a 470 and then award certain telecommunication services on an annual basis. This year it was for internet services as well as for cell phone services. Um, we received uh, uh, two bids, one that met the criteria and actually was the lowest bid once again for the internet, so we're recommending to award to the uh, West Woman the media unit again. Uh, that will be $15,000 per year. It's a three-year contract, so we won't be doing that again for a three-year period. Um, the other is uh, for our uh, cell phones. Um, we do that annually, so we'll be awarding the Sprint once again. They came in with the lowest rate. The reason we follow the process is by going through this process, we receive 48% reimbursement um, through the E-rate program for, these, for all telecommunications services that are eligible, which these two are going to so, Does anybody have any questions on that? So I good the Gatsby. Um, okay. The other item we'll be asking to approve next week is uh, Gatsby 45 uh, under that uh, guideline, the governmental accounting standards. We're, we're required to have an actual study uh, done every two years of our other post employment benefits um, so that we can report that out on our financial statements. Basically, what they do is they take a snapshot of the district and all the contracts that are, are available and they uh, do a, a study of what it will cost if the district were to shut down today, what type of um, retirement benefits would we be obligated to uh, pay for. We take that number and we put it into our audited financial statements and as I mentioned, it needs updated uh, once every two years. We're recommending Howley, cons uh, Howley Consulting this year. Historically, we've worked with Willis. Uh, the, uh, a bunch of the business officials throughout the county got together several years ago when this became mandated and uh, we did a, a study and Willis was the lowest at that particular time. Their costs has continued to climb and Holly's come in and um, uh, has been servicing some other districts and they're a slightly lower cost. So um, they've obviously good feedback from the districts that they performed the service for so we're gonna give them a try this, this time around. And our next finding committee meeting will be Wednesday, March 4th at 10 a.m. in the admin building. And should be an interested in meeting since the budget proposal is supposed to come out on March 3rd. Thank you. This is the property Yes, next week we'll have an agenda item to approve some of the projects that are listed below. And the double asterisk um, signifies that they need to be on the But to not the elementary school break room, you know, what does that mean? That's a, um, similar to the one back for the discussion. Um, our next property and supply, or committee meeting minutes are listed as an attachment, and our next property and supply meeting will be March 12th um, at 3.30. Activities. The athletic meeting is, as Sergeant Hicks said, is um, next Monday at 5:30 um, up at the high school, and anybody is welcome to attend from the board. And um, it's the conference room next to the principals. And uh, also, I would like to piggyback um, Courtney's um, about the basketball team. They made a makeup game against Uniontown last night, and it was 94-92 in Uniontown's pleasure this year. Also, our win. So, that concludes mine. Oh, that's okay. Well, we just got the basketball pairing sent to us for the playoffs. Okay. Um, the boys team will play at Charleroi Saturday at 2.30 against Upper St. Clair. The girls team will play next Tuesday at North Allegheny, or against North Allegheny with a site and time to be determined. Just did it at 7 o'clock. So that's the fair. And the boys need to work a 7 seat. Thank you, Cindy. And Dr. Zolch for community relations. Sadly, there are no relations this month. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. I'm going to wait months to say that. <laughs>
agenda item for next week would be to authorize participation in the WIE Joint Purchasing Consortium for the Multipurpose Paper Bid for the 2015-16 school year. Um, the WIU committee meeting minutes are attached from uh, our last meeting on January 27th, 2015. And the next WIU committee meeting is uh, Tuesday the 24th at 7.30 in the WIU board room. Thank you. Mrs. Fenton? Yes, the um, previous meetings minutes are listed in the attachment on your agenda, and our next JOC meeting will be Wednesday, February 27th. Thank you. This is Alder Board Policy. Yes, um, we will be asking you to approve on first reading the long list of policies there, and all you need to do when you want to read them is click on the number and you can read the changes, most of which were necessitated by the new laws regarding um, child abuse and endangerment, et cetera, that went into effect at the beginning of this year. And there were some changes also to the school code, which were made necessary by those changes in the law. So that's what that's going to be. And there's going to be a meeting tomorrow morning at the admin building policy committee and I'd be happy to have you attend <laughs> and um, that will be for the second half of the group that needs to be changed for the same reason. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Mr. Music, Transportation? No reports. Mr. Palmer, Technology? Um, we got our uh, technology meeting this evening. Um, the meeting is to be next packet and we are not having a meeting next, this month, right? Which, no meeting next month. Right. right. Got it. Thank you. Um, I think last month we started reporting out on our um, meetings, so I'll just elaborate a little yeah. bit on what Mr. Palmer stated there. A couple of things we discussed at tonight's meeting. Uh, the first one is creating a site in our district, probably most likely our central administration building, as a um, Cogent 3M paper printing site. Uh, the reason we were discussing this is because there was a uh, law passed December 31st of last year, Act 153, which increases the frequency with which school employee, excuse me, employees need to get their uh, clearances, uh, Pennsylvania State Police reporting, and FBI fingerprint um, services or reporting done. And um, it's going to be a greatly increased burden on employees, and there are a limited number of sites available to do this. And so we looked into contracting to be able to uh, do this at, at our uh, central administration building. And um, we have to offer publicly a minimum of 24 hours, but do get a transaction fee paid back to us. So we're kind of in the process of looking into that. Mr. Nichols is investigating the uh, contract that we have. Uh, but it's something that we're looking forward to um, hopefully getting uh, set up for ourselves. One of the other things we talked about is upgrading equipment in our broadcast and production studio. Probably about 10 to 15 years ago, Mr. Lopatio, was that what you said? I'd say more. Okay, maybe more than that. We had um, equipment that was donated to us from a technology company to create a broadcast TV studio in our senior high school. And it's kind of come around that that equipment needs to be upgraded. So we've been investigating some pricing, and to upgrade that equipment um, is obviously um, a lot less expensive than it was with the initial implementation. And so we talked about moving forward with that, trying to implement that in this school year, um, so that it's not a new thing kind of thrown into the mix at the beginning of next year. Uh, it will provide us the ability of converting from the analog signal that we currently use there to digital signal, as well as provide some streaming capability. At this point in time, the past several years, we've um, streamed graduation online, but we'd like to have the capability to be able to stream other events throughout the district, and this would provide us with that um, capability. Uh, budget for 2015-16 as far as technology goes, I had just highlighted some three main areas with the committee um, that I'll probably be directing toward, and that is um, 
looking more toward electronic text textbooks and resources for our students with the technology that we have available, with what they are coming to us with, uh, just kind of building on that, retiring XP machines that are in the district as that is at end of life, and looking to the building principals for direction on some building specific initiatives that they may have. I gave an update on our enrollment in our um, ECAT online program, which has pretty much remained stable since the beginning of the year. And a couple other updates that I'm currently working on with the senior high is for students scheduling for next year to be able to make those requests online through our home access portal uh, themselves prior to meeting with our guidance counselor and, and confirming those choices. And then also online enrollment, which we're hoping to pilot with our kindergarten registration and then roll that into something that we would, you know, offer um, to anyone and to everyone. And that's it. We'll have minutes uh, for our next week's agenda. Any questions? Thank you.